Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to give you a tour of one of my favorite Toronto fabric stores as well as an interview with the owner. And make sure you stay around to the end because I have a giveaway of a beautiful printed pattern by the Avid Seamstress. Fabric Spark is a lovely store in the east end of Toronto, very close to me, dangerously close to me. It's actually two stores in one. So it's Fabric Spark and Country Clothesline. And the two ladies, Daryl and Sylvia, have pooled their resources to create a beautiful shop with lots and lots of gorgeous fabrics, as well as patterns, notions, everything else. Can you introduce yourself? I'm Daryl Aiken, and this is Fabric Spark and Country Clothesline. Amazing. And tell me how you started your business, Daryl, because you and I met, gosh, what, about four years ago now, something like that? I think I had just started the business when we met. So Fabric Spark is about four and a half years old now, and it started, it started um, a little bit as a hobby business. I loved e-commerce. I started in e-commerce really at the in, from, in the earliest days of e-commerce, I, I was working with uh, chapters when they moved online hmm. uh, in their advertising agency, and I worked at eBay for five years. And uh, I was looking for something to do, and I liked the idea of starting uh, uh, an online shop, I, and Shopify had launched by then, hmm. so that was a really easy thing to do. And I love to sew. I've sewn all my life. Um, and I love fabric, and I, there was good fabric available in Canada, but I wasn't necessarily finding the kind of special things that I was looking for. And I could see um, some really amazing Japanese fabric in some US shops, and some beautiful British fabric in shops, and I, I wasn't necessarily finding those things in Canada. So I started with a very small assortment, um, and it kind of just grew pretty steadily from there. It was, it was one thing after another, and before I knew it, my house had been overcome with fabric. Yes, I remember going to your place to pick up, <laughs> to pick up orders to save myself on shipping, and yes. you'd be like yes. drowning in a beautiful mountain of fabric. Uh, yes, it was a beautiful mountain of fabric. Uh, yeah, it's still kind of a beautiful mountain of fabric. Yeah, but it started to feel like the house was. Um, constraining the business mm -hmm. and I also didn't really like being at home all the time mm -hmm. um, and I was really lucky because uh, Sylvia was feeling the same way at the same time so right. so we this were, is a blended business you're it's telling totally me. a blended business so we started looking for space um, with the idea of bringing both uh, online businesses under one roof as almost like warehouse space mm -hmm. and then if we could figure out a way to create some retail uh, around that that would be great and in fact in Toronto it's it's way more efficient to be in retail space and warehouse space. 
And we really lucked out with this little location. It's we, so beautiful. Yeah, we ended up in a great neighborhood that has supported us brilliantly. And we love the location. We have parking. It's, yeah. it's incredibly lucky that we that we sort of stumbled on this place. It was just uh, uh, serendipity. So Yeah, and then you have um, a space downstairs as well that you use we for have classes? A, yeah, so when we when we took the space, it was a raw basement. So we, we had to do a little bit of work getting that um, shaped up for our classroom but uh, we've been ever since we cleaned that up yeah we've been having non-stop classes it's great wow yeah. and so tell me a bit about the transition from um, an online business to an in-store business sort of the the learning curve but then also um, like the positives and the, the, the fun stuff that's come out of that that maybe was unexpected probably the best thing about going from online to bricks and mortar is your face to face with your customers, mm -hmm. which is which is a totally different selling experience. I I you know I have a lot of correspondence with my customers, so I felt like I had gotten to know a lot of personalities through the online business, but nothing compares to having the, the face to face relationships. And it feels a little bit like we have um, started a bit of community in the shop. Yeah, and I think. Uh, it's very hard to do that online. I mean, yes. you can get a, you can get that a little bit with social media, but there's nothing that comes close to the you know the relationships that you get from people coming in and mm -hmm. pulling up a stool at the counter and maybe having a cup of tea and telling us about their projects. And we are always really genuinely very excited to see what people are working on. And and I mean, it happened again today. People really enjoy meeting each other. We've seen some really nice friendships bloom in the in the store, so yeah. you know that's been um, a, a an unanticipated benefit of being in the in this in the shop versus the online business. When I first met you. You were the tunic lady. I'm totally the tunic lady. <laughs> <laughs> I love tunics. And I remember going to your house, and you were like, uh, "This tunic and this tunic," because <laughs> yes. I, I was I wasn't yet into garment sewing. I was into modern quilting. Right. Right. And so, um, but I always remember that. So you brought in a few pieces. I did. I did. So I have to say, this this tunic is totally. Actually, this is a great example of what I was saying. This fabric is designed by Rashida Coleman Hale, mm. who's my favorite fabric designer. And I don't know what she's doing now because the um, disbanding of cotton and steel. And she's doing beautiful art prints, and hopefully she'll be back on fabric soon. But. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love this print because there's a little neon detail in it and it has um, this combination of colors that you probably wouldn't put together on your own yes. if you were looking at a color palette and Rashida does that all the time she's mm. always she, says she has a magic touch with uh, with color anyway this is the top 64 pattern from Merchant and Mills and it's it's quite cool because it has integrated pockets mm -hmm. this is the first time I made this pattern and I've made a couple of adjustments to it since then but I made, I finished this and I was not sure, it was a little bit short, I was not sure about the detail and I took it over to a friend's house and she suggested the neon pink top stitching. Oh yeah. And to me it just totally made Love it. Love it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a great way to finish I'm this. Go a um, closer on that. Let's see here. Yeah, that's really, really cute. And I've really worn it. I've really worn it um, a million times. Amazing, and this this actually this is a cotton linen blend, and it's a little bit heavier than you might normally think about for a for a tunic, but it's it's almost like an alternative to a sweater. Yeah, um, yeah. In terms like an extra of layer. Weight. So another top sixty four print. Sylvia brought in all the Outback Wife beautiful bark cloth. So this is oh, a beautiful. this is a great story. Um, uh, this designer was using vintage bark cloth and was starting to and, and selling made dresses out of vintage bark cloth in Australia and starting to have trouble sourcing um, her fabrics. So she was approached by a really nice Australian fabric company whose name is escaping me. And um, they created new bark cloth based on vintage patterns that she recolored. And they did these amazing coordinating check so oh, wow. I did this one in two in a two-tone kind of um, yes and this this I think is a two yard uh, pattern I, I think it's split pretty evenly between the two fabrics oh, my memory is that I did it a yard and a yard yeah um, 
Yeah, someone who had careers in other industries previous to this, now you're coming into what is arguably a, you know, a brand new, um, oh. right? Yeah. yeah. So I'd love to know, you know, do you have any advice for someone who, who dreams about this and like, how do you take the step from just thinking about it to actually making it happen? It's a great question. And if I'm really honest, I have to say, I, I wouldn't characterize this as having been a dream of mine. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't sort of say someday mm -hmm. I'm going to have a fabric shop. Mm -hmm. you know? it, it really was way more organic than that. Um, I loved my career. I was in marketing for 35 years and I, I had a great time and I really enjoyed it. But you reach a point where you don't want to do that anymore. And so when I was looking for an e-commerce business, I, you know, I liked the idea of something that was much more flexible and personal and, you know, I could scale it at my own pace. Um, what is totally a dream about this um, world is I, I spent most of my career working with creative people. I love design. Fabric really is my muse. It's, you know, I, fabric speaks to me. If I look at a piece of fabric I love, I know instantly what I want to make with it. Um, and I've been like that really, that's how I sew. So I've always been like that. And um, that's my buying filter. Like if I can't mm -hmm. think of anything that I would do with the fabric, I don't buy it. And th that's why typically I don't buy whole collections. I don't, want to, I don't want anything quite that cookie cutter. I really pick and choose. We, and, and Sylvie's the same, we both really curate everything that's in the shop. And uh, that's, that is my bliss, like being able to make a new career out of working with incredibly creative people and working with color and pattern and finding fabrics that I think um, are in and of themselves incredibly inspiring and are gonna you know, spark a, an idea in a, in a home sewist, that's kind of perfect. And that's so, how you came up with your name. It is totally how I came up with the name. Like for, for me, fabric is a spark. It's the starting point. And um, I also always try and give a little idea of what I would do with fabric on the website. So that's why I always say, what's the spark? You know, what if when you read a fabric listing on Fabric Spark, I will always tell you what I would be doing with that fabric if it were in my stash. So, awesome. And then that last one there. And this one is... Um, I, so I started with the fabric again with this. I had the Anna, this is the Anna Maria Horner Luminous the first time around, yep. her first Luminous group. And this is a digital pattern that I bought from Tasuti. It's called Ola, O-L-A. It's uh, $12 Australian now. Um, and it's designed to, you can have the fabric going the same way or you can have it going the alternate way. And I was looking for something that would really play up. Anna stripe. Maria's stripe mm -hmm. and so I just added the little cuff on the sleeve so that you got the detail of the stripe um, the original has a, a patch pocket but I didn't really want to do it yeah um, and I actually wore this when I, I was wearing this when I met Anna Maria Horner so no that way. was kind of fun yeah I was at market did she say nice to you she did <laughs> she actually yes I met her in the bathroom at the convention center she Whoa. noticed us. Oh, that's fabric. so yeah, awesome. It was nice. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be my purchase today. <laughs> Besides it, the nanny arrow I just picked up. It might be mine too. Oh, it's so <laughs> to say, beautiful yeah. and so on trend too. Yeah. This yeah. is this is really a stunning fabric. So this is an embroidered cotton. It's 100% cotton. It's only about 44 or 45 inches wide, which is uh, unusual for garment fabric. They're usually a little bit wider. But this was one of those purchases we were able to make from our um, lovely garment fabric guy and as soon as Sylvia and I saw this we, we kind of gasped um, I have to say for me this would be a bathing suit cover-up mm -hmm. so I, I I like cover-ups that are long sleeve and really cool yeah um, so that I don't have to wear sunscreen um, and this is this is light as a feather it's yeah. just incredible 16, 1695 a yard yeah it's not bad for I, I have to say when I've looked at embroidered fabrics before they're massively expensive so yeah. I haven't brought them in before and this this we also have this in black and this one's gonna go up on the website this one's going up on the <laughs> and so if you had a piece of advice for someone starting out in this industry what would it be it's really important that you find a way to get the word out you know it's probably it's probably true no matter what 
the business model is. Marketing is everything. Mm. You need to find a way to get awareness, to get people interested, find your target audience, know who they are, where do they hang out, what do they, what do they care about, um, and have a good business model. If you can't give yourself a long runway to make the business model work, um, make it a part-time job until you, until you can. It's, you know, it, it, I think there are a lot of businesses like that. Um, they, it might be your passion, but it's, um, don't be deceived. <laughs> and it also doesn't have to be full-time to be rewarding and, 100%. and yeah. you know, bring in a little bit of extra, right? You Absolutely. Still, oh yeah. And add. I think, I think there's lots of people doing that quite successfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted you to pick out a few of the patterns that you have in the store and match them up with some of these incredible fabrics. You guys, look, like seriously, I'm like it's not really that much fabric. It's not? Okay, okay, <laughs> if you say so. Looks like a lot of fabric to me, but okay. Yeah. So show me what you have there. This is the Wanderlust t-shirt yep. from Fancy Tiger. We love Fancy and, Tiger. Yeah, and it's a great pattern. We've, we've taught this in a workshop. It's, mm -hmm. We've had a lot of fun with this. This right now is listed on Country Clothes Line, so okay. you can find the pattern there. Yep, I'll list that below as well. And I think this is actually a terrific print for that t-shirt. Mm. It's an art gallery knit. It has a really cute chevron. Um, to me, there's this is one of those patterns that's, that reads as well really close up as it does from really far away, mm -hmm. which is great in a garment, um, especially a little t-shirt, because it makes it feel a little bit more special. And that art gallery, um, Jersey is such great quality. It's incredibly soft. It washes beautifully, yeah. and really, it's it's one of the nicest knits we carry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the art gallery is fantastic. And that's one of the t-shirts from the class. Yes, this is one of the t-shirts from the class. Um, so it's really cute. You can see, it's got a really nice A-line shape, so it's really flattering. Yeah, you know, for those of us who. Like camo in the midsection. I think, anyone, I think everyone likes a little swing around yeah. the midsection if exactly. you're over 22. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Pretty much. Yes. Yes. And then this Christine Haynes one. Uh, Haynes. This, is, this Haynes. is actually, yeah, this is one of my favorite patterns. I just think it's a classic. And she was really clever in the way she designed this. There isn't a set in sleeve, um, but you can do a long sleeve. The patch mm. pockets are really cute. Mm -hmm. It also is slightly A-line. Mm -hmm. um, not not a lot like there's not a lot of excess fabric there mm -hmm. it's a it's a really flattering pattern mm -hmm. and I I love this so this is Manchester it's a Robert Kaufman fabric um, we've got it in a few different colors but it has such a beautiful weight it's great for summer it has the look of uh, something with a little bit of linen in it but it doesn't it's cotton so it won't wrinkle it's got, yeah it does it has a really lovely almost woven um slight texture to it yeah and we've got some really pretty neutrals but i also love this jewel tone yeah that you know that would give you Gorgeous. a nice that would be a pretty lottie dress right? that would be a beautiful <laughs> yeah. lottie dress and with the patch pockets you could do color blocking or something really fun or yeah. add a sleeve and you know there, there's lots of things you can do with her with her pattern to just make it, it up a bit. bit yeah exactly mm -hmm. and then this is um cashmere at a great um plus size patterns she has beautiful style i think her um her silhouettes are always really interesting and uh flattering and it's great yeah I also love a v-neck I personally I just really like v -necks. me too um and this is a really nice cotton and steel net that wow just, yeah it's so rich That's um and actually one of the girls in the shop made the wanderlust tea and this it just looked amazing yeah I can, it looks so cute I can imagine it's really rich and yeah. deep and then just before we show the giveaway pattern, because yes. we are so excited to have a giveaway pattern, you were mentioning that you have specials going on all summer? Yes, so last year we did the Summer of Color, which was really fun. Every week we featured another color, and we, were, we wanted to do something similar this year and thought, let's change it up a bit, because we do have a lot of different um, fabrications in the shop. So we decided to have the Summer of Substrates instead. So a substrate is basically what's underneath Mm -hmm. and, and it's a, a term that's used to describe the, the fabrication. So we started with double gauze, which um, you noticed. I, I did, know. I did, yes. I got my Nanny Aero. We had a here. contest to win some Nanny Aero fabric, which sadly, Lisa didn't win. Well, but, well. <laughs> um, and then this week we, ha we are doing 15% off linens. 
and I'm not going to reveal what's happening next week, but we've got every week a new um, fabric to talk about. And um, and that'll come out on your newsletter. And evening? it'll be in my newsletter. It'll be in Sylvia's newsletter. It'll be on both the websites. It'll be in social media. Um, and uh, it's, it's also, it's a good, it's a good opportunity if you're thinking about garment sewing and you haven't done a lot of garment sewing, you can try some new fabrics and, or if you've never sewn with knits, it's a great, you know, it'd be a great time to try knits or double mm -hmm. gauze or what, what have you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So this is the pattern that you've so kindly donated to give away. Yeah. So the Avid, the Avid Seamstress is a really beautiful, um, British pattern company. I think we're the only ones who carry it in Canada. Mm. So it's, it's a, I don't know if you could call that an exclusive. I think you can. We can. Um, <laughs> Let's do. <laughs> yes. So this is a really cute dress. It's called the sheath dress. It's it. This is a great garment for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience with um, set in sleeves. Um, it's just a, a simple elasticized waist. Uh, I don't know if you can see the pattern. Oh yeah. There. The silhouette. Yeah. Um, nice. And we thought that it would be gorgeous in a double gauze. Oh yes. So we chose a couple. Lisa and I are both double gauze. We names. are. <laughs> These are both Nanny Arrow prints. Oh, She's come my favorite. On. Yes. Double gauze. The double gauze queen. How perfect is that for summer? Yeah. yeah. So her her fabrics are quite unique because they're so painterly. Yeah. They're she really is an artist, and so you end up with um, fabric that you could literally stretch on a canvas and hang on your wall. Yeah. Yep, I've been tempted multiple oh, times. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. And then I have to make it, I have to wear it. And yeah. then this is a more dramatic option. I know, I, and I love, love it too. This. this this has this comes in a couple of colorways. It's like a wonky awning stripe. It's so it's so cute. Yeah. Um, I almost got this during your double gauze. I was deciding between that and the one that I ultimately got. So I, it definitely well, is very cool. I think this is another example of a designer who's really adept at color, putting things together that you wouldn't necessarily have chosen for yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you see them, you go, oh, it's perfect. Yeah, that it would works. Change a thing. Yeah. Totally, totally. So, so I think for the giveaway, what we'll do is people need to comment on this um, one below, and I'll co come up with what they need to comment on. <laughs> yes. And then I'll have them head over to Instagram. Perfect. And on the day that we, pu we publish, you can put a post, and everyone can comment there perfect. and follow yeah. and, uh, and get to know you. Perfect. All right. Great. Thank yeah. you so much for sitting down with me today, Daryl. Thanks, Lisa. Glad we finally really made fun. it work. Yeah, me okay. too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, so how do you enter to win that fabulous pattern? First, leave me a comment below and let me know what you enjoyed about this interview. If you'd like me to keep doing these, I have a couple planned coming up. Um, also, please like this video and make sure you're subscribed. That's really, really important. And then head over to the Fabric Spark Instagram page and there will be a post there for you to comment on. And please comment there in order to be entered. So yes, you do need to comment over there as well as comment here. Follow Daryl, follow me, and that's how we're going to give away this pattern. Yes, you can enter from anywhere. Um, I hate limiting giveaways. I just, for the price of an extra bit of postage, I like everybody to be able to enter. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.